Thanks, Meter, for sponsoring this video. Butter has been around for over 9,000 years. The saying butter makes everything better is true, especially on steaks. There are many types of butter in the world. Today we are exploring American butter and European butter. There's a huge difference between them. Visually, you can clearly see that the American butter is more pale. Mainly, it's because of the cow's diet, water content of the butter, and the fat amount which makes a huge difference. The big question is, which one is better? Well, I decided to run a few tests. First with plain old bread. And guess what? The European butter was better. Then I immediately fried up some eggs and the American butter turned out better to me. That made no sense at all. So I went ahead and run one more test with pasta. And the European butter was actually better. At this stage, I was confused. I thought that if one was better than the other, it would always be better. However, that was not the case. For some my ultimate final test, I decided to go ahead and try them on some steaks. As you can see, they are one and a half inches thick, they have great marbling on them, and it is just perfect for today's experiment. Since I have four of them, I really want to test this out good. Two of them, I'm going to be using the confit method. And if you are unfamiliar with it, let me explain. Confit literally means cooking the food slowly in fat. And as you can clearly see, I'm doing that using butter. Now, the last thing we want is for the steak to overcook. So you got to make sure that that butter is not too hot. It took anywhere between 10 minutes to 15 minutes. As soon as both sides changed color, I immediately set it down on a cooling rack. I did the same exact thing with the European butter. The difference between them in color is just huge. The number one key here was to make sure I did not overcook the steak. So keeping it under low heat was the key. And as soon as the red started going away, this one was also now ready. I mean, take a look at it. It literally looks exactly like a sous vide steak. That is something I'm extremely familiar with. The next step was to immediately put the steaks in the refrigerator. And we want the temperature to come down as fast as possible so that it does not overcook. As that was happening though, it was perfect because it allow me time to go ahead and make an awesome side dish. And this one is not only amazing looking but also quite simple to make, especially if you have the right ingredient. And for that it would be this, a scarlet shrimp. They are large, pricey and one of my favorites. However, if you cannot find it, any other shrimp should work just fine. And the first thing to do is to go ahead and cook them. Into a pan I threw in some olive oil, followed by garlic and shallots. I cooked it until it became translucent. Then I immediately threw in all of the scarlet shrimp. The most interesting thing for me is that these shrimp never change color. We all know that butter and shrimp goes perfectly together, so I kept adding little by little. I made sure to cook them to perfection. They do not take long to cook. To season them, I use a good amount of salt and black pepper. As the next thing to do is to go ahead and add some white wine. This will help deglaze the pan, but most importantly help finish the cooking process. And at the same time produce one of the most flavorful liquids I've ever made. But now that the shrimps are fully cooked, I went ahead and cooked some pasta. I just followed the instructions in the bag and reserved a good amount of the pasta water. Into a pan I added a little bit of garlic, followed by shallots. Cooked that up until it was translucent. Then I added some tomato paste and mixed everything well. I season it with salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and that wonderful liquid gold we just made. Then I added some more white wine, mixed everything well and immediately threw in my pasta. As you can see we need a little bit of hydration and for that I used the pasta water. To finish it up I added a good amount of parmigiano reggiano, mixed everything well. Using tongues I removed it from the pan, immediately it went to a plate, added some extra parmigiano reggiano followed by that beautiful scarlet shrimp. For coloring and flavor I added some parsley and that is today's time dish. Now I'll tell you one thing, this is delicious. If you don't love seafood, I understand that this might look intimidating, but trust me when I tell you, it is absolutely delicious. Don't believe me? Well, you just wait and see, because by now my steaks were ready to be cooked. First, I needed to get them seasoned. I kept it real simple, a good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. And now that we have everything nicely seasoned, the only thing left to do is to go ahead and cook them. First, I'll be putting a nice wonderful sear. Once that's done, I'll be cooking them in indirect heat until I reach an internal temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. So now I say it is enough talking and it is time to grill this beautiful steak. So let's do it.
Before moving forward, I want to thank today's sponsor, Meter. They say you can tell the doneness of a steak by touching here, 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 and feeling your steak. Let me tell you something, guys. That does not work. You want to be accurate? Use a thermometer. And you want to know how I get the ideal medium rare steak every time? By using a meat thermometer. And the Meter 2 Plus is the thermometer I use to get that nice, delicious steak that everyone will enjoy. It now has a higher temperature limit, up to a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, making the Meter 2 Plus the ideal choice for direct heat grilling. Not to mention, Bluetooth 5.2 coated PHY, which means stronger Bluetooth stability and increased range. Another great feature is that it's waterproof. So get this, you can deep fry and sous vide, no problem at all. And best of all, it has five internal sensors. The more sensors means that it's going to get a more accurate reading to help find the true lowest internal temperature. Say goodbye to touchy, 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 touchy. That don't work, everybody. And say hello to perfectly cooked steaks every single time. The Meter 2 Plus is a game changer. If you're interested, click the link below to find out more. Thank you, Meter, for sponsoring this video. But now, let's get right back to it. All right, everybody, here we got our beautiful steak with a very nice and impressive side dish today. You should have put this on the other side, oh, bro. Come on. Nah, that needs to stay right there. <laughs> no, no, no. What do you mean? You don't like seafood? I don't like looking at the faces of the things I'm going to eat. Dude, that, those are some big eyeballs. That is the <laughs> largest freaking piece of shrimp I've ever seen. So here we go. We got a little experiment going on. Give me your critical opinion. Sounds good? Critical. Yes, very critical. Critical. Mm -hmm. We're going to tell it like it is. We're going to go this direction, gentlemen. Please dig in. Let's give it a try right now. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. oh, wow. It's super juicy. Yeah, as soon as you take a bite, that juice just bursts right out of the steak. Has a very rich and savory feel, almost kind of like buttery, I would say. It doesn't have that same charcoal crust that we're accustomed to here on Google Foods, but it's delicious, beefy, very juicy. I enjoy it quite a bit. I'm curious to see if this one's going to be any different. Let's Please, do it. Let's go. Say it like it is. Ready to go? I'm going to be a critical jello man. <laughs> jello man. <laughs> Yeah, they make fun of me all the time about the jello men, everybody. Jello. I don't like to say gentleman. Gentleman sounds like a wrong word. Well, it's, that's because you're saying it wrong. But <laughs> Enough talking before I get more roasted. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Mm. Damn. Wow. Wow, that is a really delicious steak too. I know you said that you wanted us to be critical. It's hard to be critical with both of these steaks because they're both really delicious. And I do think that this one is better. I agree. This one, I don't know, it has like a richness to it that's mm. more pronounced than the first one. It's better. It's better. It's better. Is it more better? It's more better, more butter, more better. <laughs> is that the difference, more, more butter? It's a lot of butter. It's a tremendous amount of butter. <laughs> a tremendous amount of, mm -hmm. let me put that second piece back. <laughs> It's unanimous so far. So far, so good. Very good. Now, I got a nice, beautiful side dish for my people today, so everybody. So far, so bad. I have a question, guys. I might sound like a child here, but do you guys cut your pasta? What's going on with you? What are you talking about? No, you don't cut your pasta. Leo! You guys don't cut your pasta? You are about to get annihilated by the Italians. You never do, you guys never do that? Never even heard of that. Get out! Here's what I will say. My Italian friends, I know you guys love your pastas, and I love my pastas too. I like to respect, but... I also respect my people. Do whatever you want with it. You want ketchup? I'll go get it. That, no, no, hell no, I don't want ketchup. <laughs> little bit of pasta, little bit of shrimp. Let me know how it tastes. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. That is fantastic. Ah! That tastes way better than it looks. You're going for another one. I usually don't like seafood, but Google's been doing his thing with the seafood mm. lately. This is really good. Not bad, not bad at all. <laughs> Look, the pasta is delicious. I really like the flavor on that shrimp. Compared to other shrimp, this thing is massive. Yeah. You know what that means? You get a meatier bite. It has a coating of oil on it. It tastes slightly garlicky. You can taste a little bit of the cilantro and all the other seasonings in it. It's just a really delicious pasta and shrimp as well. There's like a cheese, like maybe Parmesan or something on yes, it. Yes, correct. And it comes through a really nicely. It. You see, you didn't want to try it. Now you're cleaning up your plate. No, it's delicious. It's good, it's good. But let's try the last steaks, yeah? Let's dig in. Enough talking, let's give it a go. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Four steaks on the table. Side dish that I actually liked. Oh. This is a good video. <laughs> I don't know about for you guys, but this is so much better than the other two combined. I would agree. I think this steak is the absolute perfect ratio of that beef flavor plus that butteriness. You still taste it on this steak and it's delicious. More charcoal too. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. The charcoal is a lot more pronounced. I don't know, maybe the way you cooked it is different, mm -hmm. but it's amazing. More charcoal flavor, more butteriness. It is better for me. Is it for you guys too? 100%. Yeah, I think so. Now, I'm curious for the next one. Let's go. Last steak. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, amazing. That is really good. You said to be critical and this video has been 
very hard. These are some delicious steaks. Everything we've tried is good, mm. but that last steak was amazing. But which one is better out of these two? Man, I think they're about the same. It's hard to tell, honestly. They taste very similar, but I like the charcoal on them. That slight smokiness really brings out the beef flavor a lot. It's delicious. There is no difference between them for you guys? For these two, I would say no. I would say these two are definitely different than those, and yeah. these are very different to each other. Wow, well. interesting experiment, because I think I feel the same exact way from you guys. Yeah. So these steaks here were confit in butter. Okay. Oh, okay. So European butter actually won. So European butter is way better than... Right, European butter is better, apparently. And then here we have the same thing too, but these were not confit. These were just basted in the end. Oh. So if you are basting your steak in the end, it makes no difference. I like that because American butter is cheaper, everybody. <laughs> More cheaper, more better. More cheaper, more better. That's what he said. <laughs> European butter is quite expensive. So if you want to know how to make your steaks better, don't confit your steak. You're wasting your time. It makes a good steak, but not a better steak. Save your money. America, baby. America, baby. America, let's go. <laughs> I'm Canadian, bro. <laughs> Save your money, baby. More cheaper, more better. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below which butter you like best. I would love to know because on bread, European butter is better. Ooh. Oof. See you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.